Hey guys, today let's talk about land banking. If you haven't heard that term before, it just means buying a property that has future development potential. Bonus points there if you can find a property that has the potential to be developed in the future, but also has the potential for rental income now. A good example of this is this property down here in Georgetown that we're going to take a look at today. It is a fixer-upper with two houses on a single lot, a one-bedroom house that's vacant and a three-bedroom house that's occupied. This is a deal that's available now. It is an estate sale. It is a motivated seller. So if that is something that you're interested in, definitely shoot me a message. I would love to run through this deal with you and show you a little bit more about why I think it could be a very good buy. So let's take a look at the property first. Um, here's the home. You can see the pictures. That's the front home there. That's the back home. You can see it's it's nothing fancy, but at the same time, if you can renovate this so it is safe, it is nice, and it is livable, there's a huge demand for inexpensive rentals in Seattle. Builders are building these big condo townhouse developments with one-bedroom units rented for $2,000 a month to Amazon employees. And although there is a need for that, we have a real, real um, shortage of affordable housing here. So this is a great opportunity to do something really good by renovating this unit very, very lightly so that it is safe and affordable. But not throwing a bunch of money into it knowing that the main play here is future development the main play in the future will be knocking both of these houses down and building three brand new units so let's take a look at this property it is in georgetown they've been dropping the price it's currently five hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars if we run through the numbers on this we can see that if you're able to get average rents on this property it cash flows over a thousand dollars a month with 20 percent down that being said, average rents here might be difficult, right? It, it is a property that is a little bit of a fixer-upper, and we are only budgeting, you can see right down here, $15,000 for the renovation. So let's flip here to below market rents and take a look at what it'll look like there. If we assume that we're getting kind of the bottom 25% of rents, it does still cash flow $500 a month, and that's true cash flow, including all your expenses, all your maintenance, all your CapEx. So now let's look at this as a land bank. We'll take a look at what we could do with the lot if we were to knock both structures down and build completely new. Luckily enough, there is actually a brand new construction, single family plus DADU. So they've condoized the lot and sold the single family and the DADU separately that just listed on the market just a block away about two days ago. So let's look at their project to give us an idea of what we could do with ours and what uh, what the end value of that project would be. So here it is, just a block away from the subject property. We do have two structures here, the DADU and the single family house. Here's the DADU, we've got it sold, or listed, excuse me, for 599,000 just under nine or just under a thousand square feet and then we have the single family it's listed for eight hundred forty nine thousand uh, just around 1850 1900 square feet so in general we want to spend no more than 25 to 30 percent of the after renovation value or the end value on a new construction project on the dirt itself so this project, if we add 849 plus 599, we're gonna end up with a total project value just under 1.5 million. 25 to 30% of that will be between like 360,000 to 450,000 for the dirt itself. So remember on this project, you are buying both houses and the lot for 530,000. It looks like the lot itself is probably worth, give or take, plus or minus, um, low 400,000s. So you, you can see here how land banks can make a lot of sense, right? The dirt itself is worth nearly four hundred thousand. You're just spending an extra one hundred thirty thousand to get a cash flow rental property that allows you to hold both those houses and have them cash flow for as long as you want until you have the money to build on that property. And ideally, the nice thing about land banking is just like regular banking, when you put properties away in the bank, the end value of whatever project you could go on whatever project you could build on it tends to go up over time. So if you bank this for four years, maybe you're sell selling the main house for a million and you're selling the DADU for 700,000 as prices go up. Or maybe uh, zoning actually starts to allow more density in Georgetown and now all of a sudden you're able to do six townhomes and sell each of them for 800,000 instead of just a single family plus a DADU. The principle here is that if you can find a cash flowing rental that you don't over renovate, you hold you make affordable for, for tenants, and you hold and wait for a development opportunity to come up. 
it can be really profitable for you. Feel free to give me a uh, give me a shout in the comments if you have more questions about land banking. I know this is a little bit of a complicated topic and a lot of it has to do with zoning. So if you have a specific property that you're interested in, happy to look at the zoning. We do a little bit of development ourselves and let you know what you could build on it. Thanks, guys.